Hi everyone, I'm pro saxophonist Jamie Anderson. You're watching Get Your Sax Together. And on this week's show, I'm gonna answer the question, what do you see in your head while you're improvising? During my recent three-day improvisation challenge, I had a fantastic question from Pascal from France. I'm gonna read you his question because it's one of the best questions I think I've ever been asked on this channel. Hello, Jamie, what do you see in your head while improvising? The question may seem strange, but I'm sure that one can't think of all the theory or all the different harmonic choices while improvising. Too fast for a little brain, he says. Maybe the chord letters or simply the notes, or rather, an idea of a climate, he gets, he gets lovely and uh, poetic here, or rather the idea of a climate, like a sunset or a rainfall to guide the improvisation tones. I love that. Generally, when I try and improvise, Pascal's saying, I rapidly come in playing simple patterns I previously learned, and this is boring, certainly because that's not my expression and I don't have a global idea of what I can't develop. It's like an intellectual attempt to copy and paste a good lick, but that's certainly not an improvisation. Thank you very much, Pascal from France. So sorry for the mistakes. Thank you so much for that question, Pascal. That is just such a great question, and I'm gonna attempt to answer it today. However, did I hear you say, what's that hoodie you're wearing there, Jamie? <laughs> well, I finally got some great merch. Um, this hoodie is so snug and warm, I'm gonna have to take it off in a minute because it's just too hot. But look what it says on the back as well. Sacks up your Sunday, and there's loads of other fantastic merch. So I've now got a dedicated shop and it's at Get Your Sacks Together Store. Dot com. So go and check it out. My favorite thing is to get your socks together. Oh, you're gonna love them. <laughs> anyway, that's the new merch shop. That's all exciting stuff. As always, make sure you check out my um, free one hour saxophone success masterclass because that's packed full of great stuff about improvising, playing sax, getting a great sound, gear. It's the whole nine yards. It's absolutely phenomenal. So check out the um, free masterclass using the link right there or click the link in the description. And of course, the new course which is coming out very soon is dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Improvisation Mastery. Um, this isn't part of the merch store, by the way. I don't think you really want a picture of my face D on your t-shirt. <laughs> anyway, the course is coming along great. I've had loads of feedback from the three-day improvisation challenge and that is all going into the course. So, time to get really excited about that. We're probably less than a month away. I would say it's going to be insane. So without further ado, let's now crack on with the show and start looking at this question of what do you see in your head while you're improvising? <laughs> So I was just improvising completely off the top of my head there. I had no idea what I was gonna play. And the question is, what's the view like in here? What's the view like in your head when you improvise? Now the obvious answer to this question is, it's very, very individual and it's radically different for different players at different standards. I've got to imagine, I don't know what's in your head, of course, but I have to imagine that what's in your head when you're improvising is probably different from what's in my head and by the same token, there are geniuses of the instrument, like the Wayne Shorters of this world, who have a completely different mental process going on when they improvise compared to me. I remember uh, I was chatting to Molly Duncan, the, um, the late tenor player from uh, the Average White Band, and he had a great chat with Wayne Shorter. And Wayne Shorter was saying to Molly, just forget the notes, man, just, just play and forget everything you know. <laughs> and Molly and I were both saying, yeah, that would be uh, <laughs> that would be great, wouldn't it, if we had that Wayne Shorter level. But that just goes to show that in Wayne Shorter's world, he isn't trying to think about the notes. He's just opening up his mind to creativity and letting it just pour out of him. And that is, of course, the final goal, isn't it, for, for all of us. But uh, mere mortals <laughs> like me, that's probably a bridge too far not to think about any of the notes. So that's the first thing I would say about that. There's 
different things going on in different people's heads. I will say this though, whatever is going on in your head while you improvise or while you play sax, it's gonna be fantastic for your brain. The studies have shown that when you put an ECG on people's head and measure their brain activity when they play music or improvise on saxophone, it lights up like a Christmas tree. Almost every area of your brain goes on fire when you're playing an instrument and especially when you're improvising because you're accessing memory, creativity, logic. So many um, patterns in your brain are being fired off that it's a wonderful way of nurturing your brain and it's a great way of staving off brain aging. I know that Alzheimer's is such a terrible debilitating disease for so many people and other related brain diseases and playing music and improvising on your sax is one of the best ways that you can keep your brain firing and really healthy. So first of all, let's talk about rhythm. What's going on in my head when I'm improvising related to rhythm? Well, one of the most common things I hear from improvisers is that they get lost in the actual form, the structure of the piece when they start playing. If they're not playing, they can count out the bars and beats and they won't get lost. But as soon as you start playing, they lose, they lose that count. Now, Here's what I think might be going on. With me, I don't have to think about the beats and the bars and the rhythm. This isn't a, this isn't a thought process for me. This is a body rhythm. That rhythm, just like that little short improvisation I did a second ago, that rhythm is visceral. It's in my body. It's embedded in the tissues, in my blood in my beating heart, down to my very toes, to the finest hair at the top of my head, that rhythm is pulsing inside of me and I feel it in my body. So I don't have to intellectualize the one, two, three, seventh bar, eighth bar, all that stuff is now so second nature that it's embedded where I don't have to think about it. I think what might be going on is that when people have the rhythm up in their head and it's not in their body, as soon as they start playing, that's another thing in their head and the rhythm gets shoved out the bed <laughs> to the side. So the most important thing you can do for your rhythm is to get that rhythm out of your head and into your body and on autopilot. And there's loads of stuff in Improvisation Mastery coming up, which is gonna show you exactly how to do that in the simplest possible way. Now, in terms of the rhythm, my top cognitive priority is for the overall form of the song, the, the structure, the how long each chorus is. I must be locked into that. And that's something that you just feel after you play music for so long. I just don't need to count eight bars anymore. That's not to say I don't recommend you do because we might be at different stages. However, for me, that rhythm is really embedded, not in my brain. So I don't need to think about the rhythm so much, but I am very, very, very aware of playing and emphasizing the rhythm with everything that I play. In fact, I'm not just trying to stay in time. I wanna go well beyond staying in time. I want to generate extra time. I wanna generate strong groove and pulse with every note that I play. I don't wanna just be in time with the backing track. I wanna take the listener and bring them with me and bring that drummer with me. So I'm contributing to that groove, that pulse, just as much as any other drummer. So although I'm not thinking about that, my body is moving with the music, which means that because it's all in my body, I don't have to think about it. So I'm sort of conscious of creating that groove as an intention, but it's not something that uses up um, cognitive processing power in my brain.
So let's now talk about listening as the second aspect of what's going in my head. Your ears are constantly processing audio, whether you know it or not. So that's definitely a brain process. Your brain is decoding all these sounds you're hearing. However, when I listen, when I'm improvising sax and I listen, I'm really listening carefully. I'm paying attention to the nuances of what the band are doing. I'm, I'm feeling the flow of the energy of what I'm hearing. I'm also looking for new ideas. Maybe the piano player throws in a little something and that, you know, I can either react to it or copy it or respond to it. And I'm also thinking about leaving space because you can't very well play and listen as much as when you stop playing. So that's why leaving gaps in your solos is so important because you can hear what's going on and then you can really respond to it. So in terms of listening, I'm really tuning in to what I hear so that it inspires me to play something. And also I'm getting a lot more information about the harmony, about the way the groove is, about where the song is, about the overall dynamic. If the tempo's shifting slightly, I can respond to it. So listening is super important. And this is something we can come back to later because if your head is completely consumed with notes, chords, maybe you're like a rabbit in the headlights, you can't listen. You just can't listen and process all that information. In my head, I'm definitely paying attention and listening all the time. The best way you can possibly listen is by closing your eyes, of course, because you shut off a whole, a whole sense. Now, what is quite fascinating when you close your eyes and play is that the visual centers of your brain still light up, almost like you're using your mind's eye to picture chords or you know some sort of intangible um, parts of the music that your visual cortex is still going over time, even though you've shut your eyes. So number two is listening. I listen very carefully in my head. So let's talk about number three now, which is your memory. Your memory is really firing like mad when you're improvising. It's recalling all this information for you as you play. And that's definitely true of my brain. One of the biggest things that's happening when I'm improvising is that I'm accessing memories from all over. Chords, scales, licks, um, phrases, transcriptions, patterns, techniques. Uh, chord substitutions, uh, different versions of that song I've heard, um, licks I've heard from other tunes that would fit that. Uh, what else is that? There's so many things that you're accessing with your memory all the time, and that's only the tip of the iceberg because there's another 90% of subconscious stuff that's way beneath that. So definitely memory is a very strong part of what's happening in my head when I'm improvising, I'm remembering things, I'm accessing things. Now you need to have those things stored in your brain so that you can access them straight away. If you transcribe enough solos, you start to just get a sense of those licks and those phrases and those building blocks that you can use to improvise and your memory just picks it up, boom, and out it comes and you let your fingers do the rest, which is gonna bring us on nicely to our next point. So let's move on to the next section, which is about your fingers. Now you might think of your fingers as your second brain. What you wanna do is transfer as much of the information you can from your real brain into your fingers brain. Now, of course, your fingers are being controlled by your brain, I know that. However, if you can get it out of your conscious mind and get as much as you can underneath your actual fingers, you won't have to think about it when you're improvising. So for example, if I see, let's say, I don't know, A minor seven chord, 
I don't need to think about it before my fingers, you know, run straight from the root up to the ninth, eleventh arpeggio, everything. Scale, Dorian scale, bush. It's right there under my fingers. My fingers are doing the thinking. It's all embedded in there. Now, of course, you don't need to be a genius professor to realise that that is just practice. You can condition your fingers to respond like that if you practice enough. You make it second nature. When I see a chord symbol, I don't have to take a split second to think E flat minus seven, that's E flat, then up uh, three semitones to G flat, and then four semitones up from there to B flat, that's uh, uh, what are we in? So it, the relative major is uh, uh, G flat major. No, I'm not thinking any of that. I just see E flat minus seven, boom, blah, 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 it's under my fingers. The more you can get under your fingers, the less you have to think about. One of the most common complaints that people have, the most common struggles, is that when they're improvising, they see the chord symbol, they work all right, okay, C, C major seven, I've got, ah, oh, it's gone, I missed it. Now where am I? I'm lost. <laughs> it's, that ship has sailed, baby. So you can't make up for lost time when you're improvising, and wow, those chords, they just keep coming at you, don't they? They just never stop. <laughs> so if you can get some of this stuff out your head and into your hands, wow, that frees up a lot of processing power. If you're not getting to those chords and scales fast enough, it's not because you don't know them, and it's not because you're a bad player, you just haven't practiced them enough to be fluent yet. And there's no substitute just for hours at the cold face playing those chords and scales. There just isn't. I wish there was, I wish I could tell you. In fact, improvisation mastery would just be a so much more of a sellable course if I could give you an easy answer to this. However, you gotta put in the spade work. You gotta get it out your head, into your fingers. And you've gotta let your fingers just run without thinking about it too much. Now, I do have a lot of stuff under my fingers, but I don't have everything under my fingers, so I am thinking about chords and scales. I'm not, as Pascal said, I'm not dreaming of uh, waterfalls and all that stuff. No, I do have nitty gritty in my mind, 100%. There's a whole lot going on up there during an improvisation, but one part of it is thinking about the nuts and bolts. A minor seven, D seven, to two, five, one, secondary dominant, use the Lydian dominant, da 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 da, sharp 11 there. That is definitely going on in my head when I improvise. Maybe not for Wayne Shorter, <laughs> but it definitely is for me. So there are definitely nuts and bolts going on in my head, but I try and get as many of them under my fingers as I can. So I hope that helps understand how you can really improve your improvising if you know the right stuff to get under your fingers. But that's the key, isn't it? You have to know the right stuff to practice to get it under your fingers because you don't want to sound like a robot playing technical exercises. Now the next thing that's going on in my head when I'm improvising just like that a minute ago, I had no idea what I was gonna play. It ended up being the sort of chromatic idea that I played once and then I followed it up and then I changed it again and then I'm like a, I'm like a, a cat playing with a toy mouse. You move it around, you can have fun with these ideas. These, are, these ideas are like little tinkerbells. They just come from somewhere you can grab it. In that instance, it was just a which is tying in directly to the last point I made about fingers. I've got the chromatic scale perfectly under my fingers. So I don't need to stress out about how to move my fingers on the keys to play a chromatic scale. That just happens automatically. So if I've got an idea and it's these little chromatic runs, almost like little slides between notes, my fingers are there no problem. But until you've got the technique to do that, you might be thinking, oh, how do I play that chromatic scale? So another great example of getting it out of your head into your fingers. But these ideas, who knows where they come from? That'll take us on to our next point. But I'm listening for these ideas that come out of my sax. 
And as soon as they come out, I'm on it. And I'll respond to it almost like I'm, the idea comes out and then do I copy it? Do I go with it? Do I go against it? Where's that idea taking me in my improvisation? This is what the great players like Sonny Rollins, you can hear him doing, you can almost hear him. It's a strange thing to say you can hear somebody thinking, but you can hear those ideas, how he processes them in his head. And I try and be inspired by that technique. So follow the idea, see where it goes and see if it will flow into something else. A lot of times people complain that, well, maybe not complain, but they're challenged because they can't play a lovely flowing, interesting line when they improvise. It all sounds the same old thing, same old, same old, same rhythm, same notes. They're trapped in these little boxes. And the best way to get out of that is to just open up the tap a little bit in your creativity and just let the idea flow and see where it goes. See where it takes you and then follow it because that's gonna make your solo sound really interesting. It's gonna keep it fresh. You won't have to keep relying on licks that you've learned. Not that I'm against playing licks, but if you play a string of licks that are disconnected, I don't know, there's something missing there for me. So in my head, I'm always thinking, what is coming next and what's just happened and how can that influence what happens next? So follow the ideas from origin to source and see where they take you after that. So the final point I'd like to make about what's going on in my head when I'm improvising is definitely going to verge into the woo-woo, the land of woo-woo for some people, but it's the most important thing of all about the process of what's going on in my head when I'm improvising. So that music does something very powerful to me when I improvise. It takes a part of my heart, the music is emanating from my heart, is emanating from my very heart and soul. I can, I can feel it, I can feel the music in my DNA almost. And it's the best feeling on the planet to feel that music in you and to blow your saxophone because blowing your sax is, you know, breathing is life. So playing your saxophone is exactly the same as life itself to me. So I feel that music in me and I just express it as much as I can when I play the instrument. It's the greatest feeling of all time. But not only that, that music, that, that feeling, that emotion that I can feel in my body, in my mind, in my heart, all through me and around me, that I'm trying to play through the sax, that is connected to something even bigger. Who knows what? You might believe this, you might believe that. Everybody has a different belief. However, all I know is that this process of individual creativity and playing music and making those air molecules jump around with this instrument, there's a much higher connection going on at its best now at its best. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, there have been gigs where I am not connected to the great creative spirit. Maybe it's 2 a.m. and I'm playing music I don't wanna do. I'm only human, so this isn't something that happens all the time. However, my intention in my head is always, always to try and strive for that, whether I make it or not. So I definitely feel a sense of everything around 
the planet, universe, you name it, being channeled into one feeling and then expressing that feeling through the sax when I play. That might be where these ideas come out of that we talked about in the last section. It might be these Tinkerbell ideas. They just, they just pop in there from pure creativity. Who knows? And that's why I love following those, those ideas because that's the ultimate message of music, isn't it? It's that personal, personal expression which is an expression of everything. <laughs> I told you it was gonna get woo-woo, but that is what's going on. That is what's going on when I'm improvising in my head. I'm connecting to that feeling, that emotion, that power, you might say, and trying to replicate it through my solos and through my sound and try and give that sax some emotion, you know, it's really, put your heart and soul into it. So when you play your saxophone, try and connect to what's really important for you in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, and just communicate that music. You don't have to be the greatest improviser to do this. Now, like I said earlier, everything is going on at once. It's a maelstrom up there, isn't it? You might be just thinking about chords. You might be thinking, I can't tap into a higher power. I'm trying to think what C major is. <laughs> and that's cool, but just play a C then. Don't worry about the C major bit. <laughs> practice that in your practice time so that it's under your fingers. But until then, play the one note that you can play and play it with heart and soul and feeling and try and communicate what's in your heart. We're humans. We need to tell stories. We need to express ourselves in this way to be healthy and happy to show up as a better person in the world and to radiate that positive energy to those around you to affect your family and your friends. This can all happen when you learn to improvise on your saxophone. So it's one of the most important things you can do. You might not be an ER doctor saving lives, but in a way, this is also important work because you can influence not only your own life, but the lives of others, and of course, the lives of your listeners. Think about all that fantastic music that you listen to all the time. Those people who performed that were responsible for your happiness. And I can't tell you the number of times that my life, my mood has been transformed by the music of others. So I try and do that as well when I play. Woo, we have gone in deep today, or what? So, I hope today's session was really useful. It's quite a personal, very personal, I'm telling you exactly what's going on in my head. Nothing could be more personal than what's going on in my head. So I really hope you got some value from today's lesson. I hope it sheds some light on this whole thing that, you know, I'm not this divine being who can improvise just, you know, as a gift, no. You work on it and there's nuts and bolts going on there. There's memory, there's inspiration coming on. There's, uh, you're trying to remember stuff you've practiced. You're thinking about the chords. You're connecting your body to the rhythm. You're following those ideas. There's a whole lot going on, isn't there? So I hope that's been helpful anyway, having a little look inside my head. That's a scary thought, isn't it? And there'll be more fantastic content, of course, next week. In the meantime, if you've bought me a coffee with uh, buy me a coffee. You can see the link there and you can uh, click the link in the description. I just wanna tell you that how much I appreciate it. It really does make such a big difference to me. You're all legends. You're all legends of saxophone. Thank you so much. <laughs> As I've already mentioned, watch out for <laughs> Improvisation Mastery, which is coming up in less than a month. Oh my God, I can't tell you. I am flat out working 5 a.m till 8 p.m. every day on this bad boy. It's gonna be incredible. And of course, go and check out my free saxophone success masterclass using the URL or click the link in the description. Don't forget about the merch. Get yourself some Get Your Sax Together socks. Get your socks together. And until you do, practice hard, practice smart, and enjoy your music. See you later. Let's talk about number three now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, buddy sniffs. Let's. <laughs>